How's it going, my friends? My name is Gary, and this is my channel, Weakest to Weeks. If you're a first-time viewer, I appreciate you clicking on the video and definitely consider subscribing. So if you're clicking on this video, obviously you would like to learn more about the clutch pedals for an OBS or a GMT 400 platform vehicle. Now, without getting too much into it, basically I have a video series coming out, or it might already be posted, about five-speed swapping my 1998 K1500, the small block Chevy, and a 4L60E. So that is the exact NV3500 five-speed transmission, then I'm going to be swapping it into to replace that 4L60E automatic transmission. That's a video series for another day, but today, specifically, we're gonna be talking about the clutch pedal assemblies. One thing that I quickly learned throughout this process is there is two main styles of clutch pedal that you need to be aware of if you're in the process of five-speed swapping your GMT 400 platform vehicle. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here are the two styles of clutch pedal assemblies for the GMT 400 platform. Starting on the left, we have what I call the first series, 1988, the first production year to 1995, a pretty solid seven year span. If you know anything about this platform, 1995 is a very oddball year, a lot of one year components, electronics and hardware. But regardless, if you're in the 88 to 95 category, more than likely, you're gonna need this series one style clutch pedal assembly. Anything after 1996 to 1998 plus, you're looking at what I call the second series. And why I have 1998 plus is simply because most of the GMT 400 platform ended in 1998. The exception being with the heavy duty pickup trucks, the 2500s and the 3500s, actually carried into the early 2000s, and after that, rolled into the GMT 800 platform. So if you have the GMT 400, 88 to 95, you're looking at this one on the left, anything 96 or after, this version on the right. And I totally understand that at this distance, they look identical, but once we get a little bit closer, you'll understand that these are in fact very different. Here's a closer look at the two styles of assemblies here. Now, a quick disclaimer, the sections here down come from the factory painted black. The top sections, the actual mounts do not. Usually those are just bare metal and quite frequently they are rusty and crusty. So for sake of demonstration and installing one of these in my vehicle, I actually fully stripped these down and put a nice lick of paint on it so they all look nice and clean. Otherwise they would, from the factory, be all rusty and crusty. So starting off, the what I call the Series 1 88 to 95. If you catch the main difference right off the rip is this clutch safety switch. So it has this external switch. You have these two very thick gauge wires that run to it. Clutch safety switch is simply, if you have the vehicle in gear and you try to start it, if it didn't have the safety system, the vehicle would lurch forward and possibly hit someone or something. So this means that you actually have to have the clutch in all the way if the vehicle is in neutral or in gear, doesn't matter. You need this to press for the vehicle to start. And then once you release it, you can go on your merry little way. On this one, it's actually built into the clutch slave cylinder. Notice how it has a sensor built into it. And it actually has four wires and they are a much smaller gauge than the two wire version here. So it's a all in one deal on the newer style, but then external on the older style. A major, major difference in bolting this up, depending on your year, is the fact that this one has offset bolts. You have one at the bottom left, one at the top right, and then also you have a perfectly circle hole for the clutch master cylinder to go through. On the newer style, not so much. Notice how this one has horizontal bolts, perfectly horizontal, and then the hole, if you look closer, it's more squared off, which is pretty interesting. So if you try to put a newer clutch master cylinder into the old version or vice versa, it's not going to bolt up and work properly. I'm sure with enough effort you can make it work, but for sake of just bolting things up the way they should be, it's not going to work. Those are two main styles and especially how it bolts into your firewall. It's gonna be real goofy if you try to retrofit the newer version into the older one because that is perfectly horizontal and this one is offset. It's just gonna be at a very funky angle. So continuing on with the differences, again, the clutch master cylinders are gonna be different because of the holes that they go into. This older style, I don't have a good example of it, but this is a piece 
from a clutch master cylinder. Whenever you replace it, you actually get the whole deal, but this slides on, goes over those studs, and then eventually connects to the actual pedal. And then this one, it goes in, and then if you look closer, you know, from the exterior, it is round, but what actually locks into this assembly is square. And then this actually goes through and it twists to lock in. Now, if you know anything about these clutch pedal assemblies, the older version actually has a notorious problem with a spring breaking. And for those Kenine viewers, I don't have one in here currently, but I do have a replacement. And this is a new old stock version. That's the part number. Extremely hard to come by. I have yet to install it. But this clutch return spring goes in on this stud and what that does is as soon as you press the clutch with that spring, it flings this clutch pedal back into the resting position that it needs to be in. Whereas on this version, you don't have an external spring on this sleeve. It's actually built into the clutch master cylinder. So you can see it right there and then another one right there. So there's two built in and it's kind of goofy, but like you can kind of see this thing snapping back but it makes more sense once it's actually in here and locked into place. So not only is the spring situation different, but also the clutch bushing situation is different. This one is all nice and greased up. And then this one also greased up, but it has these plastic bushings. Another main difference with this one on the left, you have this additional switch. It's actually the exact same switch as this clutch safety switch. And it's probably hard to see because it has this additional bracket. But then there's a big difference being with the gauge of wires for the pigtail. But basically, this mounts something sort of like this, and it's a separate piece than the actual clutch pedal assembly, and it mounts to the underside of the dash. But basically, with full spring tension, this pedal is out like this. This is mounted, we'll say something like this, and the switch is all the way engaged like such. So if you were to have cruise control and you have it set, the pedal is creating full tension with that spring. This switch is depressed. Well, then you want to turn off cruise control. You try to shift down or whatever the case may be. You press in the clutch, it moves it forward, and then it disengages the switch. And what that does is it turns off cruise control. So it's another safety feature. So my understanding is this later model version doesn't have this additional piece to it. Now on the truck that I saw this came out of, it had provision for that, but because I wasn't able to pull it, it was non-existent. It wasn't there. But what I think the case is, this has four wires. So I think, whereas this one has two separate sensors, the clutch safety and the sensor to kill the cruise control, I think it's all built into this clutch master cylinder because you have the four wires. Additionally, talking about the clutch master cylinders on this early style, in my opinion, it's a lot more secure. So this is actually only part of this clutch master cylinder. The other side was leaking, so I pitched it. But if you were to replace the clutch master cylinder, you have basically like this section attached to this one right here. And of course it goes through the hole and attaches to that linkage. But on this early version, it actually is kind of one with the bracket. So this goes through the firewall. You have the firewall here, and then you have the clutch master cylinder that goes through and it pinches it, and then you tighten the bolts down. But on the newer style, the bracket is entirely separate from the clutch master cylinder. So it's got its pros and cons. It's nice because if you were to replace the clutch master cylinder on the newer version, you don't have any bolts to undo. You just have to detach the linkage and then twist it out and off, and then to replace it, twist it back in and reattach the linkage. And then for this one, unfortunately, you have to undo two bolts and then slide it through and, and obviously do the linkage as well. But the thing is, in my opinion, is that this version is all plastic. So you have a greater chance of marring up the plastic. And then also with that, in my opinion, because it's separate from all of this, and you have no bolts, it's just held in with physical pressure from twisting it. There's a lot more give to it as you really depress that clutch. Whereas this one, because it's all one unit and it's sandwiched between the firewall and the bracket and the bolts, it's extremely more sturdy on this early version. Similarity, 
again, it's kind of few and far between, is going to lie with the clutch pedal pad itself. This is a new old stock version. This is a reproduction aftermarket one. I have a new old stock one for that that'll eventually go onto it, but doesn't matter. This same style pedal pad or the aftermarket version fits on these 88 and after. But that's pretty much the similarities. And even though these things look pretty darn close from a distance, they are in fact extremely different. So I hope you found this video incredibly informational. I understand it was probably a bit of an informational overload. I'm just really hoping I was able to convey the differences of these clutch pedals to you if you're in the process of five-speed swapping or manual transmission swapping your GMT 400. And the main reason why I ended up doing this video was simply because as I was going along with the early steps of this process, I got the incorrect clutch pedal assembly because I didn't know otherwise. So I'm hoping by taking some time, explaining the differences, it'll save other people time and money. So if I misconstrued or had the wrong information on any of this, please, by all means, drop a comment down below and clarify because I just wanna make sure the proper information is out there so it helps other people and avoid some excessive spending of money and time and all that stuff. So with that all being said, I appreciate you making it this far and I hope you subscribe and to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.